stretch it up, tuck it on over about seven-ish times. Second set of stretch and folds, just going back in for another 25 minutes. Look a little sticky to me. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to take you along on a sourdough bread day with me. Now I've been making sourdough for maybe six months-ish and this is my first month attempting normal sourdough. I started with gluten-free because that's what I started earlier in January. So since January I have been baking bread. Gluten-free to me was so simple. Put it all in a bowl, mixed it up, no stretching, no folding, let it sit, pop in the oven, good to go. Sourdough, on the other hand, she's another beast. Uh, for you guys that just executed it so well on your very first time, I'm a little bit jealous because I have tried four times now. My first ever loaf was a cheddar jalapeno and it was not horrible, not horrible, not the best. It was sort of flat. Second loaf, blueberry lemon, horrible. I don't know what I did. It was gummy. It was dense in the middle in certain spots. I don't know what I did. Third loaf, the best. Very big holes in the crumb though. And as you know, you want holes in your crumb, but not the size of the ones on the planets out in freaking the solar system. Literally my whole eyeball could fit through one. This loaf, as you will see, huge holes. So just go on this journey with me. And if you are an avid sourdough baker, please drop in the comments below. What am I doing wrong? Let's get into the video, you guys. First up, this is my leaven. I did 10 grams of my active starter and then I put in 50 grams of water, 50 grams of flour. Let me show you the inside. I just have this little lid just sitting on it and this is an old peanut butter jar. So literally you can use anything. This is what she looks like right now. Pretty thick, which is good. And I stirred her up real nice and she will get bubbly and she will double in size tomorrow. 12 hours is when this should be good. And I did this around like 7.30ish. So tomorrow at 7.30 in the morning, I'm gonna start making my bread. This is my most recent loaf. This is not right, basically. Too large of holes. I did the initial shaping of it. I, it was not tight enough and I had to run somewhere and I wanted to get it in the fridge so I didn't have 10 extra minutes to try and let it set again after reshaping. So this is what we got. I mean, this is the nicest um, exterior crust I've had on any of mine and it is still very nice and soft. It's not doughy or dense. It's a little too airy. When I first did the scoring, I initially noticed that Basically, the the bread had it was not tight enough. I was went to score it after I pulled it out of the fridge after about four hours. It kind of closed in on itself because it was just kind of like flat, almost like a pancake, and it should have a little bit more of an arc to it. So I knew immediately, like the the texture of the dough and everything was beautiful the shape of it was not so i knew it wasn't going to be my 100 percent my best loaf ever it it is so far my best loaf ever like like i was saying but tomorrow we will do better good morning you guys i have you kind of sort of propped up kind of sort of not whatever i'm making breakfast but we are starting and i accidentally sorry sorry don't be bad already started putting the ingredients in the bowl so i cannot even show you the freaking leaven. I'm so sorry. We'll have to do this again in another video or maybe I'll make another loaf and add it to this video and show you just the leaven. But <clears throat> let me show you what we got. So here's my leaven. Oh wait, yes. <laughs> um, okay, so 100 grams of the starter, 300 grams of water, let me clear this up for you, and 500 grams of the King Arthur bread flour. 
I think I'm going to get some whole wheat flour because a lot of the recipes call for whole wheat just because it activates the yeast and ha gives the yeast more to eat off of in your actual loaf. So right now I'm only using the unbleached bread flour, which I don't know if that's what's causing me a problem, but I think other people do it as well. So I don't think necessarily it's a problem. But let me get to mix in and then we'll see what the shaggy dough looks like. We're just making one loaf and I'm just going to mix everything up. Do note that I did not add the salt yet. So the water and salt content have not been completely added here. But we're just going to use a wooden spoon and get her all shaggy dough like to incorporate all of the flour. So now that I got to this point, which it's pretty shaggy, I'm actually going to just use my hands and tuck it in and around a little bit. Just fold it in on itself. Make sure you have all the flour incorporated and it's still pretty shaggy. And at this point, the dough is still pretty sticky, but don't worry, it'll be all right. And then another trick, I guess, is dip your hand in water and just kind of slide the remaining parts off. Cool. Now we're just going to take a little scraper and turn it into a, a rough ball and then we will have it proof for 20 to 30 minutes for the auto something or other. <laughs> uh, but just a rough ball. Scrape down the side, make sure you get underneath. Boom, boom, kazoom. And then I'm going to stick mine in the oven and leave the oven light on. I did that last time and the dough itself was like superb. I just had issues with it being too flat, um, but that was on my end with that loaf I showed you earlier. I just have a shower cap, I'm gonna cover it, put it in the oven with the light on. go off in like 10 seconds but we're gonna pop her out this is what it looks like after that initial set now we're gonna add our water with our salt content and we're gonna mix it in so 25 grams of water and then uh, 10 grams of salt Here it is. I'm just going to kind of mix this all up and then incorporate it into the dough. You basically just, well, let me mix it up a little bit more. You just literally dump it on top and then incorporate it into the dough. So just like this. And then you'll have basically this slimy kind of ball. And again, we're gonna put the lid back on. Sticker in the oven for another 30 minutes with the oven light on. Now that we have included the last bit of water and the salt, we're actually in the bulk rise phase. So it's going to be uh, over the course of two hours. We're going to have stretching and folding and every 25-ish minutes. So right now it's in there for 25 minutes and then we will go back, stretch, fold. I'll obviously show you guys, put it back in the oven, stretch, fold, 
put it back in the oven and then we'll do a different type of stretch and fold which is like you just fold it on top of itself so it's a little bit of a lighter stretch and fold and not as crazy i guess but that's what we'll do all right we are pulling it out and doing our first set of stretchy and foldies this is what it looks like So about seven times, we're just going to stretch it, fold it over itself. I got my little cup of water, just in case I need it to dip my hands in. But let's get to stretching and folding, you guys. First set of stretch and folds. So I probably don't really need this, but usually just one hand and it'll be pretty, you know, janky. So just stretch, fold over. And this is actually a little bit watery. Must have not incorporated it well enough. But just stretch it up, tuck it on over about seven ish times. <clears throat> Perfect, last one. And then just kind of, oops, tuck her. Perfect. And again, just gonna cover it back up, throw it in the oven with the light on. Just finished up the second set of stretch and folds. She's going back in for another 25 minutes. All right, we are on the third set. This is how the dough is looking. Pretty nice. So we're just gonna do four. Just pull it up, stretch. Last one. Yeah, getting a bit sticky there. Okay, then cover. And we'll go on to our fourth set. The fourth and fifth set are a little bit different. We're going to just fold it in half and fold it under. But I'll show you that when we get there. Fourth set here. We are going to do a little tuck folds, I guess they call them. And you just grab the center and you kind of fold it on itself. Kind of like fold it on itself. Twist. Do the same thing to the other sides. It's a gentler way, I guess, of doing the things. Do you think I know? <laughs> no way, girl. I don't know nothing. All right. And then we'll let it sit again for 25 minutes. And we'll do our last one of those. Let it chill. Do the shaping. And then the pre-shape. And then other things. All righty. Fifth set. Oops, and last set, let it rest because we're not doing an additional, uh, I can just kind of like fold on itself. I also need to get a heavier bowl, I think, because this thing is redonkulous.
There we go. Okay. So I think this is what we got cook a looking right now. Eh, about to fall over. Um, I think we don't have to do. Let's see what we got to do, actually. Now that we just did the last coil fold, we're just going to set it aside for about 10 minutes, let it chillax like so, and we'll come back to it. We're just going to lightly flour the top of the dough, just ever so slightly. We also are not um, doing multiple loaves. This is just a single loaf. There we go. So now we want to make sure we don't have a lot of flour or anything on our surface and we're just going to flip her down and let gravity take effect eventually. Maybe. Yep. There we go. <clears throat> Here we go. Woo. Okay. So we have our floured side on the bottom. And if we wanted to, and we were going to make multiple loaves, then we could chippy chop this thing up. But we're just gonna make one single loaf. So now that we have this all nice, I'm gonna put some flour in my hands, just a, a, a smidgen. That way I don't, it doesn't get all stuck to me and whatnot. Um, oh, that's actually like super sticky. Huh, interesting. Well, we'll see how this goes. I don't know. It's looking a little, looking a little sticky to me. This is like way sticky. I wonder. Hmm. All right. Okay. It's gonna. Okay. It's working. Okay. Perfect. So, just want to make sure we get a lot of good tension on the top of the ball. And you don't want to over tighten, but I think you just want it to basically stay in the shape of a ball. So, I think, I think that's good. Yeah? All right, so we're going to leave this. Now I'm just going to dust the loaf a little bit with some flour. Cha cha a little bit more, and then I'm just gonna cover it with a towel for about 20 minutes or so. I don't have any clear wrap. It'd be nice to have some clear wrap, but let me cover it with my tea towel since, yeah, we'll just, there we go, perfect. So we're just gonna cover it for about 20 minutes. That's for show. Oh, this is way too, uh, this bread, this is still way too fun. So now it's the final rise. I leave it in for like three to 12 hours. So basically when I get back from the gym later, I'll have to cook it. We are on the final steps of this bread journey. If you have hung on until the end here, thank you so much. We're really hoping to have this bread turn out and have a really nice crumb because as you guys saw at the beginning of the video, my last one had giant holes in it. So I did something wrong somewhere. Hopefully this time I followed the steps, did enough, had enough air put into it and dispersed appropriately. And hopefully the crumb is absolutely beautiful. We will see. I have the oven preheating currently. I'm putting it to 500. My Dutch oven is inside with the lid on. We are heating those up. It's gonna be probably about 30 minutes worth of letting that heat up. Maybe 10 minutes after it actually reaches its temperature. Then I'm gonna pull the bread out of the fridge, 
fingers crossed it still has some type of lift to it because last time mine was pretty flat like a pancake and when I scored it it didn't open up very beautifully so I might only do a single score on my um, bayonet because I'm doing a bayonet style I think it's bay bayonet a bayonet style we'll see I'm gonna grab it out of the fridge real quick just to get an eyeball on what she actually looks like I'm like a little bit terrified but we'll figure it out She's still pretty wiggly, so I'm a bit scared. Like, look at how much movement she's got. And I don't know about all that. I feel like that's a lot of movement for her. Oh, you guys, I'm terrified. I don't know, we'll see. I'm just gonna leave it in the fridge until it is absolutely time to take it out. But for now, I think I'm just gonna eat my lunch. I'm about to grab it out of the fridge. The oven has been preheated to 500. I'm gonna cut, actually first, I'm gonna cut my parchment paper, so hold on. Parchment paper, about yay. Now we're gonna take it out of the uh, fridge and really, really hope, really, really hope that it doesn't just fall on the ground. dust the top and ugh, this is gonna be a horrible loaf you guys like look at that why, why is it doing that what is happening what just happened why ugh. <laughs> ah this is gonna be so ugly whatever so I'm gonna take the Dutch oven out now. Make sure you have these on. I really have no clue what just occurred there with that, but whatever. I floured it, I floured everything. Oh, whatever. All right, and you wanna be quick with this because you don't wanna let all of the heat and the steam out, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. All right, she's in there. Gotta score it. Literally, I'm doing one down whatever the heckin' bob, whatever that was. One tiny score just to score it. Like, I don't understand what happened here, but I don't know, we'll see. We'll see when it all comes, comes through. We'll see what happened. Oh my gosh, this is like absolutely horrible, but whatever. Okay, okay. This isn't good. This is not good. This is so weird. Y'all, help me out in the comments, y'all. Okay, 20 minutes in the oven. I have no words for what always happens at this stage, so everything always looks fine up until the final shaping and putting it into the fridge. Like every time, I don't, I don't quite understand what, what I do wrong. So if you guys can leave some comments, we'll obviously see how it cooks. The top is gonna be atrocious because of like how it either stuck to the top of my, so I have, a linen towel and I dusted the top and this with it's like damp though so oh, you guys this is why this is so difficult I was able to make gluten-free so much simpler like it, it was so easy the crumb was always beautiful and I just cannot get the I cannot get the regular sourdough so We'll see. And if you guys have any comments once we see this loaf and see like what happened, please drop them below because I am, a, I've watched so many videos. I understand the timing. I understand the science behind it. It's just, 
when I get to this stage of putting it in the fridge, I, I don't know what happened. Something happens that makes the loaf flat, makes it not able to actually be scored. I mean, I literally have a brand new razor. Maybe I need something like to hold it actually, like actually purchase one of those and like get in there and score it. Cause it's always like, and it says to do it in a swift motion because you don't want jagged edges and stuff, but like it doesn't cut. I'm ranting. Okay. I will see you guys in 17 minutes. We're about to check out the oven spring. We'll see if I can actually capture this on the camera. Oh, maybe slightly. Gotta be quick with it. Oh, she's spraying a little bit. Not bad, okay. That's actually not bad. Did y'all see that? Did, did you see it? Pretty decent spring, okay. I'm not mad about how springy that was. It looked like it was about to be a catastrophe when we put it in there, but that thing is popped up. It's not bad. I'm not, I'm not mad about it. It is time to pull the bread out. Let's see how she looks. I'm actually quite excited because I've peeked a few times um, and it looks great. I, I mean, what? What? Ah! I can't get the things. Oh my gosh, it keeps working. <laughs> Alrighty then. Can I, hello, sir, ma'am, sir, ma'am, one of you? Come on out. Oh my gosh, this is the most chaotic. Okay. What? What? I I mean, you guys, like, I y'all saw this. Obviously, the scoring still ended up having issues with that, but I don't even want to, it's a little hot. Um, hold on, let's see. Ow! It is so hot! I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just gonna leave it like here for you. Just gonna give you some smells. This is my best ever oven spring ever, ever. As you guys saw, that is the fluffiest loaf I have had yet. I have to wait about an hour for her to get a little bit cool so I can cut it in half and check out the crumb. Praying that it is open, but not too open like the last one I made. But what do you guys think so far? You think it's gonna be good? I hope so. It's time for the reveal of the crumb. It reminds me a lot of my previous loaf with some gymungus holes. Is that too many holes? I'm thinking it is. I think they're a little too large, but it definitely always, my loaves always lose their crunchiness as well. So it's like, oh wow, you can hear it, listen. I think that, that this entire part right here is just empty. Okay, so I'm gonna need a little help. Again, what what am I doing wrong here? Is it is it my final shape? I really think my final shaping I'm doing wrong. The science project, you guys, this is literally a project of science to try and figure this out because this is my fourth loaf, my second one that is edible. My dog wants to go outside, so let me wrap this up. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any help for me in my sourdough journey, please let me know below in the comments. If I'm doing something wrong uh, that you visually saw without within the video, drop it below. Uh, or if you have tips and tricks that you know help you understand why you have such an open crumb.
really sucks when it's a waste of your entire day, like when your loaf is has giant holes and makes farting noises. Or <laughs> like it's too dense or it this or that. So I'm I'm this is just I'm learning and I want to learn the correct way and just have fun with it. So that's what I'm gonna keep doing. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit that thumbs up button for me and um, I'm not gonna turn into a sourdough channel, but I do like sourdough and I will once in a while throw a little vlog or a sourdough video up for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye!